Honorable Speaker, the manufacture of pesticides and pest control are also being exempted under the VAT. And all these things, Honorable Speaker, are in this bill. But nobody wants to say, I will say them, Mr. Speaker, because I have a duty and responsibility to inform the people of Kenya on the truth about what is in this bill, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, there are also other proposals of zero rating items to, to do with fertilizer, as I mentioned, some for sugar cane in sugar mills, pest controls, Honorable Speaker, and I could enumerate, Honorable Speaker, under the excise duty, Honorable Speaker, and I know the member for Madare took one minute, you, I will beg you add me that one minute. Under the excise duty act, Honorable Speaker, a raft of measures also, which will have a benefit to the business community, have been enlisted in this bill, and the committee, if you interact with the report, Honorable Junette, has improved on those uh, proposals. And the bill seeks, for instance, to remove the annual inflation adjustment for certain accessible goods that have been making business people and uh, manufacturers to review the cost of Give him two minutes. Honorable Speaker, the, the review of cost of prices have, uh, were occasioned by the review of inflation on excise duty. This now will become a thing of the past. Honorable Speaker, from those from the lake region, the coastal belt where we are producing fish, you are not telling your communities and your voters that we are now protecting the fish industry with a 20% levy, which unfortunately the committee has reviewed to 10%. And this is to protect fish farmers in this country, and not just in Nyanza or the coast, even fish farmers in Odile in Kikuyu are now protected from uh, cheap imports. And we have seen Chinese trawlers, Chinese coming, uh, I mean, not mention countries, Honorable Speaker, apologies for that, but we have seen foreigners importing fish into our country, destroying our local farmers. We are protecting those people, but nobody is speaking about them. Allow me, Mr. Speaker, to speak about them. Honorable Speaker, other than the fish, imported furniture, Honorable Speaker, if you walk through all government offices, including our constituency offices, Honorable Speaker. We use imported furniture. There is now a levy of 30% on imported furniture to make sure that hustlers producing furniture on Gong Road, Karyoko, Karyobangi, in Kikuyu, Makutano, they are able to produce furniture and be able to sell them even to government institutions, Honorable Speaker. But we are not speaking about this. It is easier to vilify this bill. It is easier to sell lies and propaganda like those I have seen in Kiambu County lying to people that even the doors that carry milk are being taxed. But they are not telling them that there are incentives for local chocolate manufacturers who use milk, milk that you come from farmers in Gidunguri in Kiambu or in Limuru. It is easier to sell lies, Honorable Speaker, but allow me to support this bill with nothing but the truth that is contained in this bill. And as a close, Honorable Speaker, I want to speak to the people of Kenya. You have been told many things vilifying this bill that are untrue. I want to assure you, should this House approve this bill, together with the amendments being proposed by the committee, you will see you will not be as hurt as those who vilify this bill, as those who lie to you have made you believe. You will come to see it is only for your good because we are here to represent you to do and act in the best interest of the people without being directed by any other interests other than the interests of rising our economy from where it was left by the handshake regime and those who were there before us. And finally, Honorable Speaker, knowing and appreciating what has been said, we have two choices. To either raise taxes from the people of Kenya and finance the expenditures that we all approved here last night, all to go out and borrow. But we said and we committed as a Kenya Kwanzaa government, we shall not sink this country into a deeper economic hole by borrowing. We shall be innovative. There are innovations to tap into new taxes, like the digital economy, Honorable Speaker. And I appreciate the committee has brought the, the digital content providers from 15% to 5%. But there are also digital assets like the cryptocurrencies, Honorable Speaker, that are not being taxed. We are tapping into those things 
to be able to raise more taxes and expand the tax base. Finally, Honorable Speaker, let us not lie to Kenyans. If there are people who will pay more out of this, it is the rich. It is the rich who are earning 800,000, 500,000 shillings and above who will pay more in terms of pay as you want. Honorable Speaker, the other things that have been said about the hair products, I did mention all those things are things in the past. The hustlers in the Kinyozi salons are protected by the Finance Committee. Therefore, let us not vilify that what is good for political expediency. Let us, borrowing the words of my brother David Ochieng, let us be patriotic enough. If the housing levy in the Azimio coalition manifesto was a good thing, it is a good thing in the Kenya Kwanzaa manifesto, Kenya Kwanzaa implementing it. If it was a good thing not to overborrow in the Azimio manifesto, it is a good thing for the Kenya Kwanzaa government not to overborrow and raise taxes, raise revenues to make our country more sustainable and more economically independent, Honorable Speaker. And therefore, the, for the good of our country, I beg all of you, as we close this debate, Honorable Speaker, as I close my submission, I beg all of you, be patriotic. Be patriotic. Be patriotic. Love your country. Love your country more than you love politics and people clapping for you out there. They will clap at you. They will clap for you. But they will... Junaid Mohamed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I stand to oppose the finance bill. Oh, yeah. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I think this is the 11th uh, finance bill that I'm participating in this House, uh, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, this is one of the most controversial finance bill I've ever seen. And, and, and there must be a reason for that. Because we have seen 11 finance bills before, for those who are with me here, and you can see the controversy it has created in the country. And we have a destiny as a parliament, Mr. Speaker, we have a date with the destiny this time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, from the onset I want to say that uh, when we were passing the VAT bill, the VAT on fuel in 2018, Mr. Speaker, it is on record that I am the one who brought the amendment when the proposal was brought by the executive to raise taxes from 0% to 16%. I am the one who brought the, pro the amendment to the finance bill to reduce it to 0%. And that is one thing that was agreed unanimously by the whole House. And I remember even the Speaker then, J.B. Muturi, was supposed to subject that matter to Article 114 of the Constitution. But he waived it on the floor of the House, and he said the amendment should come directly to the floor of the House. And in the end, an agreement was made in the House here that we go to 8% and not 16%. Mr. Speaker, that 16% is the poison chalice that is in this finance bill, Mr. Speaker. Once we implement the 16% on fuel levy, everything else will go up in this country, Mr. Speaker. Let us not hide ourselves. Let us not uh, close our eyes on reality. Let us be truthful to Kenyans. Let us not accept that I'm told the proposal might be from IMF, from where. Let us not care. This House must stand together and stand with the people of Kenya because we must make life bearable for them. That is our work. That's why they elected for us. Secondly, can I tell the majority leader that the housing levy that he has alluded to in the Zimio Manifesto is completely different from what is on this, money, uh, on this finance bill, Mr. Speaker. Our housing levy was modeled in according, accordance with the Singapore model where we were supposed to collect money cheaply, affordably, in a manner that is bearable to the people of the Republic of Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Not this one of collecting through the nose, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I participated in... The, when they were formulating the Azimio Manifest. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, it is completely different. It is like day and night. Let us, don't use the Azimio Manifest as an example. If we were allowed to, to donate that Azimio Manifesto to you, every Kenyan today will be happy and will be supporting this, this bill, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to say this, that let us be careful as members of Parliament, because Kenyans are looking up to this House. This bill was prepared by the executive. But it is the House that has the final say on it, Mr. Speaker. That is why they say there is no taxation without representation. That is why we are here to safeguard the interests of the public. 
So don't be cheated that when this house passes the bill, the executive will wash their hands on us. They will say it is parliament that passed the bill. It's not them. I can assure you that. You wait until it is passed. Let us scrutinize this bill properly. Let us make sure that it is passed in a manner that is for the well-being of the people of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, we are discussing here big projects, housing, you know, we are discussing many big things, roads, flyovers and everything. People of Kenya today, Mr. Speaker, are discussing food. They are discussing what to eat, how to clothe, and how to take their children to school, Mr. Speaker. Let us not speak to them like the famous uh, French uh, queen, what was her name? And, and, Mr. Speaker, can you help me? Antoine, Ma Antoinette Marie the woman, the lady who said when her people were hungry and they were asking for bread, they, 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 they told the, she told the people, you can serve them with cake. Mr. Speaker, let us not go that direction. Let us serve Kenyans with food so that they can go to school. They can go to bed when they, are, when, when they are not hungry, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in conclusion, I want to say, this bill is going now to the third reading. We have a chance to rectify this bill as a house. Let us not be pushed to a corner. Whether you are in Kenya Kwanzaa, whether you are in Azimio, let us not be too pushed by a, to a corner by the authors of the bill. Let us file ranks, to get, let us come together, let us scrutinize this bill close by close and remove the ones that are offensive and oppressive and we pass the ones which are not oppressive. But if we want to do it the way other bills were done before here, which I don't want to repeat the same mistakes, the people... Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. On the onset, as a member of the Finance and National Planning, I support the bill. I support the bill. Honorable Speaker, uh, the Finance Bill 2023 will be a game changer to this uh, honorable country called Kenya. Honorable Speaker, the Finance Bill is addressing the core economy and gaps of an ailing economy. The bill addressing over 3 million unemployed youth who need a job. Honorable Speaker, the bill is a, is a historic bill that will mark a better start of the economy recovery. Mr. Speaker, sir, the bill is addressing the debt a reduction, which now stand, the debt in Kenya stand at, at 9 trillion, which was left by the last regime. Mr. Speaker, our project was told, and men and women of the last regime put the money on their pocket instead of our projects. Honorable Speaker, the bill is an important bill that will change this country, will address a number of uh, uh, education of millions of people and students that are unsheltered. Millions of Kenyans to finance the roads, to finance a millions of people of Kenya who are thirsty. Mr. Speaker, I stand to say that this finance bill will address many, many gaps through even CDS, that a number of things and health need to be addressed. I stand to say that this uh, a bill must be passed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mama Zam Zam. Uh, 
Uh, Honorable Speaker, I rise to oppose this bill. Um, Honorable Speaker, Kenyans have braved harsh economic times in the last couple of years. And despite promises and reverse the situation by the current regime, things seem to be getting worse day by day. The continued rise in fuel prices and free fall of Kenya shillings are affected, have affected prices of basic commodities in this country and thus driving the inflation rate above 90 percent are in recent months. Mr. Speaker, sir, I was looking at this bill and I'm looking at the increase in the VAT of pro uh, petroleum products from 8 percent to 16 percent. And I'm asking myself, how are we going to improve production if at all we are going to add this amount of task from the previous years? Actually, we are going to run down the curve and I believe that you are no longer going to collect more taxes. As you are aiming at collecting more taxes, Honorable Speaker, with this uh, kind of increase, uh, production is going to fall low and uh, the, 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 the Kenyans are going to suffer even more and the production definitely will go down. Mr. Speaker, sir, introduction of Kenya shillings Five excess duty per sugar, per one kilogram of sugar, will also affect our people. Given that um, we are currently we are buying sugar at 250 per kg, you can imagine adding more five bob on sugar is going to affect our people, Mr. Speaker. This is not a bill for Kenya Kwanza. It's not a bill uh, for. It's not a bill for. For, for Azimio. It is a bill for the people of this country. And someone was asking, what, are the, uh, what, what can we do to improve our economy? Mr. Speaker, sir, I want to state that the government can start by saving the over 700 billion looted annually by, uh, by sealing all loopholes. The government should go after looters to recover stolen public resources instead of discontinuing corruption cases and appointing thieves State offices. Cut down the size of government. A broke government should not be recruiting 51 principal secretaries and an equal number of illegal cabinet administrative secretaries. Eliminate unnecessary offices, including the offices of the spouses uh, of, our, of our executive. We don't need these offices. Thank you, Mama Zamzam. Although you are flouting the rules of the House by reading a speech instead of debating. Uh, Mama Alice Nganga. The rules of the House don't allow you to read a speech except the mover here if he has notes to guide it. You are debating. Give the microphone to Alice Nganga. What's the problem? Yeah. You have a mama switch off Mama Zamzam and give the microphone to Mama Alice Nganga. Give a portable microphone if you are not able to give it. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I rise to support the Finance Bill 2023. Honorable Speaker, I want to go on record today that we are leaders and we came here to this parliament to guide those people who gave us position to come and represent them here. And it is always good to show them the way, Honorable Speaker. This finance bill, yesterday I sat here until 10 p.m. when the report on surprise was on the floor of the house. And everybody wants roads back at home. Everybody wants electricity back at home. Everybody wants the transfer of Inua Jami, the elderly. They always come to me, Mr. Speaker, asking me when, I'm going to, when, when, when the ministry is going to add more 
more members to the Inua Jamii, but they don't want to pay tax. tax. Honorable Speaker, I'm very shocked when I stand in this house. When we were campaigning, I saw honorable members from the Azimio side on the track saying that at the end of every month they will be giving you 6,000 Kenya shillings. I am wondering where the, Kenya, the 6,000 Kenya shillings were supposed to come from. And yet they don't, they, 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 there was no money, Honorable Speaker. Well, are they going to get 6,000 Kenya shillings from borrowing money? You know, Honorable Speaker, it is good to be very honest. This VAT on fuel, it was introduced during the handshake regime, 18, uh, 16%. Then, Honorable Speaker, they decided to borrow money, and that conversation died. Then this conversation was introduced in 2021. And, Honorable Speaker, because of the minutes they took from me, when my mic was not working, so I need to be added the two minutes, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, for us to be able to take care of our constituencies... Oh, Honorable Alice, there's a point of... Is it order or information? It can't be both. It's one or the other. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just wanted to clarify, because it is also important, Mr. Speaker, that we remain factual in our address to, in this chamber. It is true the Azimio coalition promised to give stipends of 6,000 shillings to vulnerable families every month. That money was going to come from savings realized from dealing with the corruption head on. Mr. Ah. Speaker, <laughs> you are properly guided. Thank you. Honorable Speaker, Karen. no wonder I thank Kenyans, they were good enough to see the Azimio coalition were not serious, Honorable Speaker. Okay. And that's why they Thank gave you. the Kenya Kwanza government an opportunity to take. Thank you, Alice. Your time is up. Wind up in one minute. Give her one minute to commence the interruption by the minority leader. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I wind up by saying, let everybody give Honorable our President William Samoy Ruto an opportunity to take this country to another level. For midterm, we passed the, by a during budget policy statement and Kenya Kwanza plan. Let us be able to to, uh, to, to sustain ourselves from money corrected from us. This, uh, the problem of borrowing has to come to an end. And I want to tell you and to promise Kenyans, in a duration of two years, this country will move from one level to another, Honorable Speaker. Just like uh, during Kebaki's time, when he introduced ETR, Honorable Speaker, people opposed it. But later, ETR came to help this uh, country uh, with transparency and conducive environment for businesses to thrive. Honorable Speaker, I stand to honorable speaker to Joshua Kimilu Joshua Kimilu uh, thank you Mr. Speaker for giving me this opportunity uh, to give my contribution to uh, the controversial uh, financial bill Mr. Speaker Mr. Speaker I rise uh, to speak because while fiscal uh, policies are, and revenue generation are important Mr. Speaker we also need to look at uh, the interests of uh, our people, Mr. Speaker, we read. Uh, it is equal imperative to question the impact those policies have to our people, Mr. Speaker. Unfortunately, the implication of the proposal, proposed Finance Bill 2023, Mr. Speaker, will only support burden to the citizen and even more uh, to the Asalas nation that the current administration, Mr. Speaker, uh, say that they will take care of them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issue of house levy, Mr. Speaker, it is uh, very important, Mr. Speaker, for the nation to give the Kenyans options to uh, build the houses or to do what they can do through their contribution for Lundali to do their houses, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Kenyans are uh, proactive people, Mr. Speaker. On the ground, uh, the, as I quote, Kunjituma, Mr. Speaker. There are Kenyans who are struggling now, paying their loans for the houses, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we, we are not here as members of parliament to overburden our people with houses, Mr. Speaker. 
Right now as you are speaking, parents are not able, Mr. Speaker, uh, to take back their, uh, the student to school. And Mr. Speaker, it's due to lack of school fees, Mr. Speaker. Adding other tax to them, Mr. Speaker, will overburden them more. And this will make our country, Mr. Speaker, to be in a situation whereby uh, our people will create more confusion and many people who are starting a business will be in a position not even to continue with their business, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I take this opportunity and I represent my people from Kaiti, who I represent here, Mr. Speaker, to say no to this financial bill. Thank you. Mwangi Kunjuri. And uh, give to Mwangi Kunjuri a microphone. Give him the next, move to the next one. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I start to support uh, the violence bill. And I uh, have uh, a number of reasons why I do so, Mr. Speaker. First, Mr. Speaker, is that I have interacted really with a lot of people. And I agree with my colleagues that this is one of the most interrogated bills in the history of this country. This is the only bill, Mr. Speaker, whereby those old women in the villages, 78 years, old men, you go to the market, to the streets, Kenyans are discussing finance bill. All social platforms. And therefore, Kenyans are informed of what is happening and what they expect out of this bill. The most fortunate thing is that, Mr. Speaker, there are several questions that are asking. One of the questions is how did we get to where we are today? The other question they are asking, how do we get out of this situation? Mr. Speaker, when I look at the leadership of this House, both majority and minority, both Saitasimio and Kenya Kwanza, they are all very experienced, and lucky enough, they were here even the previous parliament. When these questions are being asked, Kenyans are asking themselves, who was in the driving seat then? How did we get these loans? How did we expect to pay these loans? And how do we have any now head with Mr. Speaker for us even to afford to go and borrow more loans? The answer, we are trying to offer them, we are giving them illustrations also of a sick person. And this sick person will die, either you take care of them, or we make serious decisions to take a surgery. And therefore, Kenyans must agree to go through this painful surgery to enable us to get to the next level. We might have came in different boats, Mr. Speaker, but now we must pedal together or we sing together. Mr. Speaker, we have no other choice and we have to be very genuine to our, our people. Either we do politics, we continue politicking, or we look for a way to get Kenyans out of the deep hole. And there is no way we are going to attain that, Mr. Speaker, unless we are truthful to our people. Yes, Kenyans will expect us to oppose this bill. But if you oppose it, Mr. Speaker, how will we tell them? Uh, your time is up, Kinjuri. Umulher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to oppose this motion, this uh, debate, because of the various factors. Number one is the digital tax. As a youth representative in this house, it is not fair to young people who have turned out to be content creators to be taxed. The government tells them there are no jobs, but when they create jobs, we are busy taxing them, especially on the digital space. For that reason, I am not for this. Number two is the issue on uh, the housing levy. Where I come from, 
As at yesterday, we lost eight young officers along the roads of Ijara and Bodai because we don't have roads. For the longest time, these same people have been paying taxes, but we have not given them roads. Here we are telling them, forget about roads, we'll give you houses. How is that fair? It is not a priority for us because we have houses and we are ready to have our roads built first. And thirdly, I want to also state that our Azimio side, when we were talking about housing levy, we were, not uh, we were not planning to tax Kenyans. So let us not use that as an excuse. We had a better plan. Approach the owners of the idea so that we can tell you how we were planning to product, provide houses. And on my final remarks, as a Muslim leader, this is unfair. It is not fair to judge to provide all these burdens for Kenyans. And without fear of intimidation, if we are to go to the ballot today, Kenya Kwanza leaders are going to see what Azimio One Touch saw in 1906. That finance bill is going to fail, and it is not going to be an honest point because we know where you stand. You are only scared to come out. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your time is up. Didimas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity and uh, make it very clear that uh, I want to support this particular bill. By supporting this bill is basically processing this bill for improvement through a committee of the whole house. Mr. Speaker, I have gone through the report of the committee. There are a lot of issues that are, were contained in the original bill, as it was, Honorable Speaker, that I had issues with. But the committee has provided solutions in this report, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to commend the committee for moving across this country to solicit for views of the Kenyan people, the views whose views are contained in this document, and they are proposed for a number of uh, a number of amendments to improve this bill, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I am particularly happy because we have uh, very many people who are misleading Kenyans that uh, the reduction of uh, tax on spare parts that are used in, air, in aviation, in aircraft, that they are going to benefit the rich people, but the reduction of taxes on um, aeroplanes, spare parts, is going to bring back the business of aircraft maintenance back into this country, and this is going to create very many jobs that are going to assist our people going forward, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, this is going to be my sixth time debating a finance bill, and I know that Kenyans have given me powers and the responsibility to improve a bill that is before this House because we are going to vote for each and every clause, including the title of the bill, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to make it clear that the areas that the Kenyans who are concerned have been looked into by the Committee on Finance, and even after the Committee on Finance have gone through uh, whatever Kenyans were raising issues with, we also have an opportunity uh, through uh, proposing further amendments, and I want to urge my fellow members of Parliament that we should not throw the baby with bath water, but let us improve this document because the government must continue to function by getting money from the people going forward. Uh, Honorable Speaker, with those very few remarks, I support. Member for Kamukunji. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, uh, contribute to this particular debate. Uh, I represent a constituency uh, in Nairobi with a substantial number of low-income uh, population, uh, many of them who live uh, below the poverty line. And when I speak about Kamkunji, I'm not talking about a constituency or a neighborhood. 
in a remote area of our country. Kamkunji is only about one kilometer from this August house and also from the center of power. And that's why I think uh, it is important to put into context uh, that many of the children in Kamkunji have the same dreams like any other child. They have a dream of living a better life, a dream of having access to good schools, a dream of having access to good education and uh, medical care, uh, a dream to have a decent, affordable housing. But unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, they don't benefit from many of those things as we speak today. They also have a dream as Kenyans of a, a prosperous and a better Kenya. And that's why I think, for example, many of the aspects of this finance bill would contribute for us to be able to fund the necessary infrastructure that we need, particularly with the housing uh, program. The housing program would be of a great benefit for the people of Kamkunji because much of Kamkunji is, um, consists of slums where people live in squalid conditions. It will also provide employment to the young people of my constituency as well as help many of the traders from the Juakali centers. And we have the largest Juakali in the country to be able to do things for the development of uh, this house and project. And Mr. Speaker, you cannot be an independent country, a free and independent country, if you cannot put your infrastructure in place, if you cannot pay for your health and education and lift the economy of your country. Therefore, we need to pay for this and continue stop being begging, beggars in the world, carrying a begging bowl asking for help. We need to fund our own development. And the Kenyan citizen is an agent of his own development. And therefore, I support this financial bill, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Honorable Mudoni. The member is in your name, Mudoni, the nominated member from Meru. Is in she called Mudoni? Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, okay. I rise Again. to support this bill this afternoon. Honorable Speaker, I'm so shocked this evening, Honorable Speaker, and saddened by the fact that yesterday, Honorable Speaker, we sat here and we were taken through the appropriation bill, and this house including the opposition, went through the bill and we all unanimously supported it. Honorable Speaker, we supported because we knew all the things that we seek for, for our constituencies, will come from what we appropriated. Honorable Speaker, I'm shocked because now I'm seeing a turnaround that some of our members want to imagine that money will come from the blues. Honorable Speaker, what this finance bill is trying to bring about and the cure of all the things that we want for ourselves, Honorable Speaker, will be gotten from this finance bill. Honorable Speaker, I had members complaining that people cannot afford even two meals in a day. And they are not even commending this committee for putting cross that three, where they have very clearly stated that fertilizer will be serrated. And that means, Honorable Speaker, this country will be able to have food security and each and every homestead will be able to afford two meals in a day. As I conclude, Honorable Speaker, I want everyone to appreciate that this country, Honorable Speaker, is at a state like where a milkman continues milking an emaciated cow. Honorable Speaker, for you to realize and get good returns from a cow, you have to feed it and feed it properly so that it can continue producing enough milk. Honorable Speaker, this is the more reason 
why each and every member in this house should support this finance bill. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Clive Gisairo. Yes, what's the point of order? Who is on a point of order? Honorable? Okay, hold on, Honorable Clive. Go ahead. Give him the mic. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'm rising for a point of order. Number 95, you call the mover to reply. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I hear you. Let me... The, the interest still looks quite massive. Let me hear a few more members before I come back to a point of order. Clive? Uh, I have already given the floor to the member... Thank you, Mr. Okitutu Speaker. Masaba. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yes, what's your point of order? Order, Clive. Mwishimewa Speaker, mimi umenionea. Nilikuwa namba 22 katika bodi yako. Nimekaa hapa tangu asubuhi sijapata nafasi ya kuzungumzia mswada huu. Mbona wanitenga? Honorable Mbeyu, each and every member here has an equal right to speak. And everybody will have a chance to speak. There are balances that we are doing. Your own leaders are also encouraging the chair to give certain members, and the chair cannot ignore that. Every member will speak. Na kusema ya kwamba unaonewa, wewe ndi unaonea mwenye kiti. Wakikao hichi. Kwa sababu kila mwanachama alioko hapa, kila mweshimiwa kuna wengine wamekaa hapa tangu asubuhi wengine tangu jana hata ule mweshimiwa wa lugara ameketi karibu na wewe amekuwa anainua mkono kila wakati na yeye anangojea pia kusungumuza kwa hivyo waja tungojee ukifikiwa utasungumuza usipofikiwa Itakuwa hivyo. <laughs> Clive, give the mic. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity, and I stand up uh, to oppose this motion, and mainly on two areas. Number one, the housing levy. Mr. Speaker, we will be lying to the nation that suddenly we'll start building homes for the poor that you will tax different people and build homes for different people. Mr. Speaker, we need to look at the basics. Kenyans do not have food. We are telling them how to house them. While defending these, the other side has spent a lot of time trying to tell us that this is an opportunity to create jobs for the youths. Can you tell us what exactly this levy is? Is it a job creation levy or a housing levy? We've changed it from a contribution to a levy, moved it from a provision whereby we are going to have, after seven years, the contributors had a way out or to stay in clause. Now it's a levy which makes it a tax uh, uh, generally. Mr. Speaker, that side, as they sit there, they are at pains. They are trying to convince Kenyans they are unconvincible. They are telling us that it's us who are trying to, set, to, to explain to the masses the masses are not illiterate. We are here defending the teacher who can read and understand. We are here to defend the policeman. As you sit here, some of the members who even work in this parliament are broke. They do not need these additional taxes. Mr. Speaker, the second item is on the tax on petroleum products. By them saying that 
it was members from this side who were busy pushing for 16% and they made it 8%. Now it's time to move it to 16%. That is wrong. The moment we tax petroleum more, the border border will be out of business. And you saying you'll provide for them electric bikes, you are lying to them because electricity currently as it is, for a thousand shillings, uh, electricity bill when you buy tokens, 130 is petroleum charge. You cannot even afford to charge that bike you're telling them. Mr. Speaker, I stand to oppose this. And that side, let us focus on how to provide jobs to Kenyans and not building jobs because they are not there. You are lying to Kenyans. I oppose this bill. Honorable Wamchomba. Give to Wamchomba the mic. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise for the welfare of the society and the just government of the people of Kenya. I rise to oppose. For the welfare of the people of Kenya that qualifies them to eat well, eat a meal or three meals a day, that is the way to make the welfare of our people better. And for the welfare of the society and the just government of the people, it is our business as a represent the, the representative of this house to make sure that our people live happily, improve their welfare, and make them feel they are sovereign according to the Constitution of Kenya. Amen. Mr. Speaker, I am elected in Gidongori constituency. My people cannot afford a meal a day. The cost of living is too high. Unga, the cost of unga is too high for them to have better welfare. Mr. Speaker, I have gone to my people in Gidongori constituency and they have told me very loudly that the government of Kenya through the finance bill proposal 2023, it is punitive, it is oppressive and it is scandalous. We started off with issue of housing. We came up with contribution. We moved from contribution. We made it a levy. We have moved from the levy. Now we are calling it a task. Is that not scandalous? For the welfare and the society of the society and the just government of the people, I, Gadoni Wamushomba, say no to an oppressive bill. Thank you. Oda, Oda, Muliungi. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to Order. oppose uh, the finance bill from the onset. Mr. Speaker, the finance bill goes against the wills and expectations of poor Kenyans. And I agree with my predecessor who has just spoken that this bill is insensitive to Kenyans because it proposes to overtax the already burdened uh, Kenyans. Mr. Speaker, Kenyans expected a bottom-up economic model which would put money into the pockets of people, the hustlers, and reduce the cost of living among others. Mr. Speaker, instead of these expectations, Kenyans are experiencing increased yes. cost of uh, living. Can I hear your point of order? Mr. Speaker, I raise on point uh, on standing order number 80. It is against the tradition of this house and the rules of this house to read a speech not unless it has been expressly granted by the Speaker. The Honourable Member on the floor is reading from uh, a material that he has uh, word for word. Is it acceptable? This is a house of debate and Mr. Speaker, we are supposed to come here we are supposed to come here and debate. You cannot bring materials and import materials from other places and bring them here to speak to debate. And, 
And you are ranking member, Mr. Speaker. Please, rule him out of order. Order, honorable members. Honorable Mulyungi, you have been here long enough. You had me caution Honorable Zamzam for reading a speech. Debate time is debate time. You can use notes as aid memoir, but you cannot read a speech in a debate. If you are reading a speech, a uh, deceased, I had not noticed. Go on. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I went to school. I went to school, and I'm not an idiot. I'm looking at this report, and I have to refer to it. So when my eyes look down, that member should not say I'm reading a speech. And I'll continue to look down. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, he is not my equivalent. Yeah? I'm the one who designed this oh, chamber. On, on Mr. The, Speaker. Order. Mr. Speaker. Order. Or, Honorable Mulyungi. Honorable Mulyungi. I don't think Honorable Kagombe. Sit down. I don't think Honorable Kagombe was malicious in no, that point of order. He perceived you to be reading. And I just told you, if you are reading, it is wrong. If you are not reading, you ignore it and carry on. You don't have to get agitated. These are your colleagues. No. Kuja to me. Mr. Speaker, I think there are people here who have nothing to do. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have risen to oppose this bill vehemently. Because Kenya Kwanza promised to put money in the pockets of Kenyans. They promised to put money in the pockets of Aslas, the Mamamboga, the Mboda Boda. Instead of doing that, they are taking that money from their pockets to State House. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, anything that overburdens the people of Mwingi Central, which I represent, I will oppose it till I die. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. And you have seen even from the government side, they are also opposing. Why are they doing it? Yeah? So, 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 okay. so, Mr. Speaker, yes. okay. Kenya Kwanza, instead of overtaxing Kenyans, they should look at, at, at better ways. Yeah, better ways. That's what you wanted to do. So that, yeah, that's what you wanted me to do. Look at better ways of raising money. Instead of putting tax on unga, putting tax of, on fuel, which is going to increase bus fare, border border fare, and increase even the cost of living for that border border. And the Mamamboga, who Kenya Kwanza promised to put money in their pockets, and now they are taking that money away from them. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I vehemently oppose the finance bill. Thank you. I've Kangoko Bowen. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to support the bill. Mr. Speaker, taxation is the only at the principal source of revenue in all government in the world. There is no any other source of revenue for governments. Mr. Speaker, having said that, Mr. Speaker, if you look in the last regime, the unshake government, Mr. Speaker, we overborrowed. They were overborrowed, they were overspent, and now even our credit worthiness as a country, we cannot uh, borrow anymore. Mr. Speaker, I want to talk about the issue of the 16% uh, on petroleum. Mr. Speaker, many of us, and quite a number of members of parliament who are here in the 12th parliament, 
On that first August, uh, on Wednesday, Honorable Speaker, we sat here as members of Parliament to postpone or to delay the 16% uh, the effective date which was supposed to start on September 2018, 1st of September. And that 16%, Mr. Speaker, was carried forward. Mr. Speaker, I want to tell the honourable members here, the 16 per cent on the fuel levy, it is not a new uh, tax. It's been there before. It's been there before, and it is now we are just standardising it now. Mr. Speaker, on the issue of the housing, Mr. Speaker, according to the Kenya uh, Bureau of Statistics, 38% of Kenyans currently live in urban areas. And we are looking at, in 2050, almost 70%, 68 to 70% of Kenyans will be living in urban areas. Mr. Speaker, the housing tax is very important because we don't want to be a country of slums. We don't want to create slums everywhere in, in our country. We need to provide a decent housing for our people. Mr. Speaker, I want to ask colleagues not to debate these issues outside there. Let them read the bill, get to understand when it comes to the uh, time of uh, house of supply, they bring the necessary amendment and we are able to debate as members of parliament. I support Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Nabuera Nabi. Th thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I raise to oppose based on the constitution of this country. Article 1 of the constitution of this country provides all sovereign power belongs to the people of Kenya and shall be exercised only in accordance with this constitution. We took an oath here, you, Mr. Speaker. We did not take an oath to lie. We took an oath to defend the constitution. The first thing I looked at when I read the report of the committee was to look at, Mr. Speaker, the petitions I am aware of from Kupet, from Nat from other people, including farmers in my constituency. They are not attached. That shows that the committee in itself did not do a just job. Secondly, Mr. Speaker, chapter Article 201 of this Constitution says, the following principles shall guide all aspects of public finance in the Republic. A, there shall be openness and accountability, including public participation in financial matters. The people of Kenya have spoken in public forums and said this finance bill is oppressive. As a parliament, we are left with one thing to do, to relook at it and say, this one, Wamekata, can we give them what they want? Mr. Speaker, I want to help my colleagues. Is it true that there are no other ways to raise the money? The answer is no. I serve in the Public Accounts Committee, Mr. Speaker. And if we were just to close the taps of pilgrimage, we raise 600 billion shillings, the money we are looking for. Mr. Speaker, where is it in this world that you can milk a cow you have not fed. What we are attempting to do with this finance bill is to milk a cow that we have not fed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And I think I should first disabuse the notion that, these, that what we have here is a housing bill. Mr. Speaker, what we are prosecuting this afternoon 
is the Finance Bill 2023-2024. And what the Finance Bill seeks to do, Mr. Speaker, are three critical things. One, we stop postponing Kenya's problems. Secondly, we start solving Kenya's problems. And thirdly, we stop kicking the can further down the road. For seven years, Mr. Speaker, we have been kicking the can of taxation down the road, hoping that the next dispensation shall, uh, shall solve the, the problems that we are causing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this finance bill that has been uh, adjudicated in the, uh, in the Court of Public Opinion has been laden with a lot of misinformation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, people have been going to TV stations. They've been going to funerals and meetings in their constituencies, prosecuting matters that are not even in the finance bill, Mr. Speaker. So the first thing I would like to ask, Mr. Speaker, is that we all acquaint ourselves with the content that is within this finance bill. As we talk about one or two taxes that are going to be raised, Mr. Speaker, we should also be talking about the 21 odd taxes that are due for reduction, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Kenya has obligations. Obligation number one, we have to pay our international obligations in terms of debt, Mr. Speaker. We are approaching our debt limit, Mr. Speaker. We cannot afford to borrow more, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we must find where this money shall come from. We have an obligation on recurrent expenditure. We have an obligation on development, Mr. Speaker. The social goods that our people require in the constituencies. Mr. Speaker, I see a finance bill in front of us that is a balance between walking the path towards self-dependent, Mr. Speaker, and making sure that we don't injure our constituents, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, to quote the Honorable Member from Gezongori, for the welfare of society and the just government of the people, we are here to make hard decisions because leadership calls for us to make hard decisions. Finance bill is one hard decision that if we make today, we shall be proud many years down the line that we shall be making it. And even those opposing it today shall want to associate with the success that shall rise from the benefits that shall accrue from the finance bill that we are just about to part. Mr. Speaker, we are here to debate the finance bill and not the housing bill. And for the sake of the content creators in this country, Mr. Speaker, I support the 5% uh, reduction uh, on our content creation taxes. And Mr. Speaker, I support the finance bill. Thank you, Honorable Naisula. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to oppose the finance bill that is, ahead, that is in front of us, Mr. Speaker. And I just want to say that I am actually amused by my colleagues from the other side of Kenya, Kwanzaa, whom during their campaigns were insisting on the issue of listening to the hustlers and listening to the ground. If anything, they coined the phrase to Naskiza ground. I am actually surprised that after they have won the election, the ground does not seem to matter and those people do not seem to matter. And I just want to warn them that Musiposi, if you do not listen to the ground right now, Kitawaramba when the time actually comes. Mr. Speaker, personally I have listened to my ground and the people who sent me to the August House and they have told me vehemently that you have to oppose the finance bill, especially on the issue of the housing tax. It started as a levy, it looked like a sacco, it looked like a chama, now it is a tax. And they have told me that the people of Samburu West are interested in their security, they are interested in them having an environment where they can live peacefully and they are not interested in the 1.5% tax on housing, Mr. Speaker. The second thing, Mr. Speaker, and I don't know why we are even focusing so much on the housing tax, it is on the issue of the 16% on the fuel levy, Mr. Speaker. In the last parliament, we came together in this house and we actually opposed the 16% rise on the fuel levy. And I just want to tell the same hustlers who have been forgotten that once the 16% fuel levy is increased, 
they will really feel the pinch because the cost of living will actually go up and even the cost of manufacturing in this country, Mr. Speaker, will go up. We are saying we are creating jobs, but if the manufacturers and the investors will run away from this country, Mr. Speaker, how will we be making or how will we be creating employment in this, house, in this country, Mr. Speaker? And so I just want to say that I oppose and it's even contradictory when we, some leaders go out there and say that you cannot tax your people to development or overburden them with the tax, but at the same time bring the bill. Number, the last thing, Mr. Speaker, the same leaders who are on the other side were the ones who are opposing everything that the previous regime was doing, but they are doing the same things and bringing the same proposals into this house. We know you want to do it in your first year and your second years and go out and again lure and lie to John Waluka. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, for giving me a chance also to contribute on this uh, ongoing motion. Mr. Speaker, I rise to support uh, this bill. Mr. Speaker, even if it was the right Honorable Amoro Odinga himself, to run and stabilize a government like this one of ours. He was to do the same, Mr. Speaker. The House levy was his first choice when also when we were campaigning. And I'm a member of uh, Chubili uh, in Asimio, Mr. Speaker. Uh, this thing started when, uh, during the time of Kibaki and uh, the Right Honorable Boraila at, uh, uh, at uh, Langata, when they started building, uh, putting up these houses. Mr. Speaker, to stabilize the economy, people must feel pain. And this is the pain that we are going to realize uh, before the economy stabilized, because our economy had gone down. And I support uh, this bill, Mr. Speaker, and urge all the members of this House to support this, uh, this uh, bill, Mr. Speaker, finance bill, so that we bring our economy uh, back to where it is supposed to be. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I support. Order, Honorable Members. Order. Order. Honorable Members, I know this is an interesting debate. But take your cool, keep your cool. Don't uh, stand up and raise your hands up in the air as if we are in a rally. This is Parliament. I encourage you to maintain decorum. Everybody subject to what you will agree will have a chance to speak. Atandi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity to contribute on this bill. And Honorable Speaker, from the word go, I want to say that I oppose this bill and also to clarify, Honorable Speaker, that my beard is uh, not artificial, my beard is natural. Honorable Speaker, I oppose this bill because, one, we are just coming up back from elections, Honorable Speaker, in which the government in power promised to make life easier for Kenyans. But Honorable Speaker, if you look at this bill, section clause 33, Honorable Speaker, you will find that this bill is proposing to remove from the related position very critical items such as flour, cassava, and wheat. Honorable Speaker, when we passed tax laws in 2020, 2021 during COVID rules, we said that these items needed to be zero-rated so that they, they are made affordable for Kenyans. But Honorable Speaker, this bill is proposing to remove these items from zero-rating position to exempt position, making them very expensive for ordinary Kenyans. Secondly, Honorable Speaker, there is a notion which I want to dissuade, Honorable Speaker, that it is, that it is better to tax rich Kenyans more than poor Kenyans. Honorable, this notion has no grounding in economics. Because, Honorable Speaker, 
if you want to tax rich, rich Kenyans, the easiest route, Honorable Speaker, is to tax expenditures or to, or to tax their luxuries. Honorable Speaker, if I wanted to advise the government side, I would propose to them, Honorable Speaker, that they could go and tax Kenyans in their clubs. Kenyans spend so much money in their clubs where they, they, they make merry, where they spend their extra income. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, to propose that we raise pay from 35% for those who earn more than 800,000 shillings per month means that for the first time in history, Honorable Speaker, pay is going to be, to be, to be, Kenyans are going to pay more as salaried Kenyans than corporation tax. Honorable Speaker, there is no country where corporation tax is more than, uh, salary, uh, is more than pay. This is going to be the first. Thirdly, thirdly Honorable Speaker, this is a government that was elected recently on the promise of making life better for Kenyans. It is very interesting, Honorable Speaker, that a government that cannot even construct simple houses for police officers, a government that cannot even pay salaries in time, is promising that, us that they are going to construct houses for Kenyans. This is laughable, Honorable Speaker, and I want to say that this government cannot take us as, as fools. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, we must re reject and oppose this bill in totality. Uh, thank you, Honorable Atande. Honorable Naomi Wako. Honorable members, after Naomi, I will give five, five, and I'm going to slash your time to one and a half minutes each. Five, five, then I call the mover to reply. Five, five for one and a half minute each. But Naomi, you'll have your three minutes. After that, Thank one and a half. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for allowing me to add my voice to this very important bill that we are discussing, Finance Bill 2023. It is a great opportunity for us to interact with this bill. And Mr. Speaker, I must say from the onset that I support the bill fully because it has more benefits for the Kenyans than the, the, the challenges that it produces, it, it poses. And Mr. Speaker, sir, Mr. Speaker, sir, Kenyans have suffered for so long, for many years. The challenges that the Azimio team is talking about has been there for the last many years. And the bill that is on the table today is the solution to our problems. Mr. Speaker, we must be a self-reliant government, a self-supporting government, and this bill is the only thing or the only bill that can make the difference in the situation that we are in today. And I know very well that all the members of parliament want development in their own constituencies and in their own counties but it is unfortunate today we are fighting the bill that has all the solutions ready for us. And Mr. Speaker, when you look at the manufacturing center, it contributes to 40% of the employment and the GDP in Kenya. The committee has in its deliberation offered a number of reprieve to support the sector and in particular to local companies. And through that, we will be able to employ many youths who are unemployed, will be able to create jobs, will be able to support families that have suffered for many years. Again, Mr. Speaker, under climate change, the global warming has a serious effect on the entire world. But in this bill, we are providing solutions that will have some positive impact on the entire nation. And because of all that, we also see very well that education is one of the major beneficiaries. Mr. Speaker, where there is no vision, where, where, Mr. Speaker, we perish because of lack of visionary leaders. This bill provides us with all the solution, and in order for us to overcome our current challenges, we must support. And let us not be emotional. Let us support. And to our uh, to our team, Kenya Kwanzaa, 
let us be trustworthy, let us take care of the resources that God gives us and be good stewards. To whom much is given, much is expected. Very well. All the members, let's limit the movement to the speaker's uh, desk. Uh, next, let's have Honorable Martin Owino. They were in the house. Proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. From the onset, I oppose this bill. The reason is the priority of Kenyans now is food, education, and health care. Number two, if you increase the petroleum product tax from, six to, from 8 to 16, it means you are negating all those gains in zero rating and exemptions. So you are cheating Kenyans. Number three, Mr. Speaker, that bill or that debt which we are saying we are looking for, if only we can sit down and seal all the loopholes, the wastages, the thefts from our, 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 our coffers, we will get that 780 billion. We don't need to tax Kenyans anymore. Mr. Speaker, I heard the KK saying um, that they are giving Kenyans what they promised. That is a lie. Let us not lie to Kenyans. Even, even a cow with much, much, much milk, if you over milk the cow to the veins, you will kick the bucket and you will have no milk. We are saying, as my party leader says, Punda ime choka. We don't want this bill. I oppose. Very well. The Honorable John Kawanjiku is in the house. Kawanjiku, I'm told you have already spoken on this. Then please, if you have spoken on this, you cannot speak twice. If you haven't, proceed. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I think I've been here the whole day waiting for this moment. But I want to stand on this uh, uh, floor of the House to support the Finance Bill, Mr. Speaker. We are, must be truthful to ourselves. We must tell the country the way the nation is. The issue of increasing in terms of debt, we cannot allow it to happen, Mr. Speaker. We must, in a way, be able to consolidate revenue and so that we can be able to help our people in terms of posterity in terms of the future and probably from where we are coming from, Mr. Speaker. Some of the issues are raised by the finance bill and we are supporting, Mr. Speaker, because as a country, we must start thinking towards in the future, Mr. Speaker. We must make sure that we have enough houses, even on the issue of the house levy that the opposition are really raising. We must tell ourselves the truth, Mr. Speaker, that without the housing, some of us, probably in the areas that we come from, we don't have much land, Mr. Speaker, whereby that everybody who comes around can be able to get a land to build. We must consolidate these people, put them in an, uh, an affordable housing, and give them at least, you know, uh, a dignity for their living, Mr. Speaker. Therefore, I rise to support the finance bill in totality, and even the people of Kiamba, they told me this morning, go and support the finance bill because there is no any other way that the government will get revenue, will implement infrastructure, will implement... Thank you. You have had your bite. The Honorable Odege. Proceed, Odege. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Okay. As a career trade unionist in this country, I was instructed by the workers in the public service to come here and oppose this bill. In trade union and in our labor practice, for you to deduct the money of a worker, it must be negotiated. So this one, which is going to be deducted directly, workers in this country have said no. As Nyatika MP, who is coming from the border with Tanzania, my own constituents, 
feed all the goods from Tanzania because goods from Kenya are more expensive. So now, if you are increasing tasks, this is very clear that Kenyans who are bordering neighboring countries will be doing their shopping in neighboring countries as opposed to Kenya. Yesterday, when I visited the supermarket, I found sugar from, from Uganda being sold in Kenya because Kenyans are not able to prevent increased tax. Tell us what you are going to do. When you go to Uganda, you go to Tanzania, education is free, medication is free. When you come to Kenya, we are paying. Then why do we pay tax when we are not seeing the returns? On behalf of workers and the people on your ticket. Very well. The Honorable Wanjiku Muhia. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I want to speak on the two things because many issues have been deliberated on. One, Honorable Speaker, I want to speak on this 16% uh, fuel levy. First, we are not the highest in the region. Rwanda is at 20, Tanzania is at 18, Uganda is at 18, and even if they are above us, we cannot even compare the development, particularly on the tarmac road here in Kenya. Yes. Number two, Honorable Speaker, and uh, Honorable Speaker, number two, through this tax, we are going to collect 300 billion. In this budget that we passed yesterday, we are shortfall of approximately 700 billion, meaning the next financial year, if we collect again 300 billion, by the third year we shall be at par and everyone shall be rejoicing in this country. Finally, Honorable Speaker, the country must correct its taxes because from a regional level we must obey the obligation of remittance to international obligations. We must also include the regional contributions that we do. We must print passports from the immigration. As the custodian of free movement of people, people must move, they need a passport, and this is from the taxes that we shall collect. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you. Thank you, Anjiku. Professor Jaldeza. Professor Jaldeza. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Call sir. First. I'll raise to oppose the motion. Okay. And for two simple reasons. The first one, the bill does not consider the children matters. There is nothing in that bill that touches on the children and their welfare. There is nothing in that bill that touches on the junior secondary school education, the classroom, the teachers, and the laboratories that they require. The bill is discriminatory. It, it charges higher levies on women and the beauty products. By increasing, Mr. Speaker, the bill by increasing the petroleum levy it increases the cost of living and cost of every aspect in life in this country. Housing levy is a scam. Housing levy is a scam and should not be charged to the Kenyans. After all, those of us who come from the north keep on moving from one place to another and therefore we do not need those permanent houses. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I stand to oppose. Sad Meli. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I rise to support this bill. Honorable Speaker, I want to commend the, the Finance and Planning Committee for, first of all, having listened to Kenyans on issues that they've raised. Honorable Speaker, this is a bill that has sensitized Kenyans on what is happening in the country on issues of finance. Kenyans across the country have realized their role, what they had to say and what the government are doing. This bill is trying to do a lot of things, more so in the affordable housing project, where we are now going to have, if we build houses, we are going to remove slums from our country. Our country today, as we speak, Mr. Speaker, has one of the largest slums in Africa. And the President, 
this government endeavors to remove it and create jobs. Create jobs especially in terms of uh, promoting, promoting the construction industry, cement industry and many others. I also want to say that farmers, because of the because of uh, exempt on fertilizer and zero rating, actually we shall increase production on food and many other products. Therefore, I support and I ask the House that we pass the bill. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Dr. Nikal. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for at long last giving me this opportunity. Mr. Speaker, everybody has said here that this is the bill that has struck the bill that has attracted the most attention. Mr. Speaker, the reason is simple. Kenyans are suffering and they cannot take any more load. It is not because of public participation. And this bill is completely heartless. It does not consider the suffering of the people. If you look at the amendments, the amendments are showing you that this bill had no interest in the people what it was talking at all the areas where the people are suffering. And Mr. Speaker, everybody is talking here of debts. I have not heard anybody from that side talking about debt adjustment, restructuring of debt. You cannot just continue that you will get money from people to pay the debt. Debt can be restructured. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I oppose this bill. Member for Ijara. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Buona Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to support uh, the bill. I support the bill, I support the finance bill. As you well know that this, I say, is a game changer because when our deputy president said that when we came into the government, they only found 93 million people, they are saying he's lying. But because they wanted the government, our government to fall down. We decided as a government, as a Kenya Kwanzaa government, to come up with a finance bill to sort out the, uh, the mess they have created. The other issue why I'm supporting the finance bill is because if you see Ijara, Ijara constituency, we have a, lab, a project called Lapset. That Lapset, the previous government, they said they will only put a maram an international road from Lamu up to Ethiopia and Somalia. But when Kenya Kwanzaa government came, they said they have to put a, they have to put a tarmac road. Those are the factors that is forcing us or that is making us to support the finance bill. The other factor that I want to I am supporting the finance bill is the reduction of the exercise duty that we pay on the money transfer. If you check, your, if you want to pay your money, you have to transfer money, you pay 500 shillings on RTGs or two. Emmanuel Wangwe. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. That is the last on this side. Honorable Speaker, I rise to, sub, to oppose this uh, finance bill, Honorable Speaker, on two grounds, Honorable Speaker. The issue of petroleum. I wish, Honorable Speaker, to be very clear that. Honorable Speaker, the petroleum cost, as it's shifting from 8 to 16, that will not only be the, the difference. Okay. But my concern, Honorable Speaker, okay. is the issue that the current government has taken on G2G in terms of importation of petroleum products, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, as Speaker said, that the VAT across East Africa varies from 18, 20 to 16 percent, which we want, we, which, which they are proposing. But Honorable Speaker, what they are not mentioning is the issue of the premium on petroleum product. Honorable Speaker, as we see today, premium product on G2G contract is going for diesel at 118 in Kenya, petrol at 98. What's happening in the neighboring countries, Honorable Speaker? Tanzania is importing at 40 on, 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 on diesel and 65 on premium. Honorable Speaker, if we get it right in terms of financial discipline, Definitely the prices of fuel will come down rather than raising in terms of VAT and the government will be able to collect enough. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, I, I oppose. Thank you. The last on this side, Robert Bukose. Order, Honorable Members on their feet, take your seats. Order. 
Honorable members on your feet, take your seats. Take your seats. All the honorable members, take your seats. Take your seats. Member for Kilifi, take your seats. Order, order. Order. Honorable members. Order. Honorable Bukose. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir, for allowing me to contribute to this bill. On the onset, I want to say I support the Finance Bill 2023. And, Honorable Speaker, when you look at the issue on uh, the finance bill, especially on the medical side, we have exemption of vaccines, we have exemptions on medicaments, that is pharmaceutical drugs, and this is going to boost local manufacturing. Honorable Speaker, local manufacturing is going to make it possible for the cost of medicines to go down, for the cost of drugs to be affordable by people, and therefore the cost of health is going to be much reduced. Honorable Speaker, and this is going to assist our country to attain universal health care. And therefore, with those few remarks, Honorable Speaker, I support. Order. Order, Honorable Members. Order. Take your seats. All the honorable members. Honorable Angela, take your seat. All the honorable members, take your seat. Honorable members, I told you that I was going to give five on my left, five on my right. Then I called the mover to reply. It is now time for me to invite the mover to reply. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. But before, now that I have 15 minutes to reply, I would like to donate one minute to the Honorable Chopkonga. Yes. One and minute also, to... If you have minutes to donate, donate to Chonga as well. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. In that case, Honorable Speaker, I want to thank... Order. Order. Honorable Member for Kilifi. You have constantly flouted the rules the whole afternoon, shouting and menacing the chair. I want to assure you that the chair can take action against you without any fear or favor. I'm not going to do that. You should feel embarrassed conducting yourself in the manner you're conducting yourself. Order. Order, honorable members. Order. I have even taken the extra caution of asking your minority leader to speak to you that as a gracious lady representing the great people of Kilifi who are watching you on TV. Order, order, who are watching you on TV. I don't think they are happy to see that what I'm seeing. But, but honorable members, I want you to know this that we are many. Not everybody can speak on every item on the floor. There are many members who have spoken. Your leaders have spoken. Others have spoken. And we did agree that we are going to have some closure at some point. So, Honorable Chair, you said you are donating a few slots. It's up to you. But you have time to reply now. Wanjala, take your seat. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Listening Wanjala, to the mood of 
of the house, I just would like to highlight a few Honorable issues. Honorable Angela, take your seat. Go on, I, Chairman. I would like to correct a few misinformation, Honorable Speaker. Now, before I reply, Honorable Speaker, the taxation of Chairman. Honorable Mr. Speaker, members, you have said many, many good things in this debate. We are getting to the end where you are going to vote. Express yourself. Go on. Yes, Honorable Speaker, I would like to take just two minutes to correct some of the misreporting that has happened on this bill. One of them has been the allegation that we propose for taxation of charm as Honorable Speaker. We have businesses, we have individuals that have realized a loophole in our tax laws. So instead of registering a business as a business name or as a company, they are joining as individuals, registering a charma and doing business as a charma and therefore not getting into the tax net, uh, Honorable Speaker. We have extensively talked about the things that you, the items that you've moved from tax exemption to zero rating, such as manufacture of fertilizer, manufacture of pesticides, manufacture of pharmaceuticals, manufacture of human vaccines, Honorable Speaker, assembly of uh, parts of mobile phones, and all this, Honorable Speaker, are going to do, go a great yes, way to incentivize Honorable our Jeanette, manufacturing, order, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Kimani, Honorable Jeanette, what's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, we, I want to seek your indulgence, Mr. Speaker. You know, when you are listening to the finance chairman responding, you need to see him physically, Mr. Speaker. But now we are blocked here. We can't see. It's like he's in another town. We are listening through radio or TV. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, what are the Sergeant Adams up to? Sergeant, Can we see the person who's talking to us? Sergeant Adams uh, allowed Jeanette to have a bill in sight. Okay, continue. Yes, after listening to the members of the public through our public participation, I want to report we dropped the 20% requirement for deposit in our courts for litigation, Honorable Speaker. The digital content monetization has been reduced from 15% to 5%. The, turn of, the, the threshold for turnover tax has been reduced from the minimum threshold of half a million shillings, Honorable Speaker, and we have increased that to 1 million shillings. Honorable, Honorable Dr. Gogo raised the concern about wigs, Honorable Speaker, and I'd like to tell this committee that we have deleted these items as accessible products, Honorable Speaker. And the main reason, Honorable Speaker, is that there are very many Kenyans who came to us and told us okay. that they, 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 are, they are victims of cancer. And after going through chemotherapy, they get to lose their hair. And they were telling us if you tax those weeks on our speaker, we are going to make it more expensive to them in addition to the cancer treatment that they, are, that they have to seek on our speaker. And with those very few remarks on our speaker, I beg to reply. Where's the other paper? Where's my other paper? Sorry, order honorable members, order. I will now put the question, which is that the finance bill, National Assembly Bill number 14 of 2023, be now read a second time. As members of that opinion say, aye. Aye. As members of the current opinion say, aye. nay. Nay. The eyes have it. Order. Order. Take your seats. Take your seats. Take your seats. Take your seats, honorable members. Take your seats, honorable members. The nays have claimed a division. And I'm satisfied that they have enough numbers to have a division. So I will call on the leadership, the whips of either side. We'll ring the division bell for five minutes. In the meantime, you bring here the names of your tellers. At the end of order, we ring the bell for ten minutes. At the end of the 10 minutes, I will direct you in the manner in which you will vote. Bring me a teller on either side to conduct the voting.
Ring the division bell.